Hello everyone and welcome to Vintegata Wednesdays. What have you been doing, Martin? I've been building like my life depended on it. <laughs> <laughs> I have been working on the studio installation. So I'm working with Olivier and the team from ID Acoustic uh, with this whole studio design. We're only doing stage one of three. <laughs> so it's <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I'm... It's so early. <laughs> The first thing I did this week is to start to prepare the whole room. So basically I tore everything down and I started to renovate the room. I wanted to create a kind of a white box. So I renovated some broken walls and I took away some chimneys. In my room I had like these orange floor tiles and I just took a hammer and knocked them off and sanded and painted over. The room looks so much more modern without these stupid orange, uh, stupid things. I hated that color as well. So. <laughs> and this feels like a new larva state for you. You're on your way to the composer butterfly now. So I guess yeah. this is not only for the marble machine, right? This is for the whole future of your music endeavors. My whole life, I dreamt about having my own music studio. It's every musician's like big dream. You dream basically, basically about two things. You dream about walking onto the stage in front of a huge crowd. And you dream about sitting in your perfect customized music studio by yourself. That's basically the two dreams for me. Anyway. Right now, I feel this room is transforming from a dirty workshop where I'm welding and angle grinding into like the dream Vintagatan music studio that I wanted to create my whole life. I mean, I'm on the second floor among the trees in southern France. It's like, it's kind of crazy. I'm practicing some young tears and it's going to happen sooner or later. So this week we made the first installation to transform Martin's room into a, a professional recording studio. I would like to explain why this is an important step for the Wintergarten project. This is not directly related to the MMX building, but we are preparing for the next step, uh, the recording of the new album and all the different instruments Martin will have to record. Renting a studio could be a good way to access a big room and uh, very high-end microphones and recording stuff and everything. But, you know, the tick-tock of the clock uh, is a real creative killer. So having your own room, uh, you can spend time to create music at your own speed, trying a lot of different things and placements and everything. And with such an instrument like the MMX, it's uh, very necessary. You know, you have to try some things. Uh, it's so new. That's why we're trying to build a room where Martin will be free to record music whenever he wants and capture all emotions. So Olivier really likes details and he asked me right away if we wanted to remove these stickers. These stickers are very awful. Not possible for the Marble Machine Studio to leave the stickers on. Oh. 
Luca, what are you doing today? Today I'm trying to find all, all these cables. A lot of viewers have been very worried about the electricity, so you're going to be the big hero now to make something a little bit more stable. Cable management. So I tried to finish this sanding a little quickly. All of a sudden, the sander stopped. <laughs> I don't think the cable should be in there, right? Elio, can you save me? <laughs> yes, I try, I try. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> Let's see if it works. You, sir, yes. are a genius. Thank you. <laughs> Saving You're me. Welcome. These are steel wires to suspend the acoustic panels. Exactly, and they are painted black. Because we are all black here. Yes. We are screwing this part um, to the panel. Yeah. In the panel. And then we could uh, put the cable in the little head here. It passes through. And then you can just uh, adjust the length of the suspension. It's only passing one way. Now, you, if you want to pass the other way, you just push it back on and it goes back. What? That's the most genius thing I've ever seen. Just a new place. <laughs> but it's so cool how much we are hiding under here. Like you see it now, how much things. Can we put the laser on one more time? Oh, yes. <laughs> one line, two lines, wow. three lines. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> These are acoustic dampening foam that is a little squishy, so the vibration is not going into the floor. And we're making four openings in the floor, so one here, one there, one down there, one down there. And in these red pipes, we can pull cables also later on, so we can pull cables even when the rock wool is on. Olivier has given me a task to cut these plywood sheets that is going to be the floor under the mixing desk position. I can't screw this up, I have only one chance. We don't have material to waste and we have to get it done today, so this is a no screw up machining operation. And I borrowed a broken end mill from Tim Keller, so I'm gonna use this as an edge finder to just align the plywood to the machine. So now I can bump up the plywood against the end mill. There. You can see it's perfectly stroking with some touch. Did you mention on the camera that this is the exact same plywood as the machine and you let us no choice about it? Yeah, no, there, there is no other plywood than birch plywood uh, in my world. So first, this is very amazing job. Yeah, I love that. Yes. It's perfectly. It's perfect. It's so smooth. It's a nice press fit. Yeah. And now, Woo. this is awesome. That's nice. Yeah. Huh? That's your design. Ours. <laughs> Three more. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. On it. Last cut 
of these super important floor plates. I cheated with the clamping and took a shortcut and took a way too aggressive cut and the whole board just moved. I'm going to cut out a negative circle here and here's my positive circle I already made. I'm going to try to patch this up. This is a good clamping technique when you want to clamp things on tables but you can't reach with clamps. So you have to make a stop solid. You have to make sure this is solid and with these two wedges you can just bump them in. I'm gonna keep this level. So there's my fix. Oh good. It was super fun to work with a team. It was really nice feeling to not be alone in the studio, to really work together with people. It was the first time I had people here since the whole lockdown situation. And Uka, Ilio and Olivier are so nice people. They were singing while they were working and it was just this great atmosphere. So we worked super hard for two days. We got really far. We also had a lot of electric problems with my house. So we lost some hours to electric installations, but still I was super happy with the progress we made. Uh, but the team had to return to Lyon. So I still had two panels to hang and I needed to oil the floor, which I started after we've been working. I took one day's rest. I was dead for the whole day. I was just, <laughs> I was just really fetus position reading fantasy for 12 hours. I was like, this, there's, there's nothing more I can do. It's like one my one day off per week that I take it, then I'm really just dead. <laughs> so that was Saturday. And then yesterday, Sunday, I went up early in the morning and I was like, okay, Martin, this is the day. No internet, no phone, just get it done. So I started early in the morning and tried to finish the whole installation. This panel comes from the programming wheel, by the way, back like 100 videos ago. So if you look carefully here in the roof, there's six black points. These are the fastening points for the plate. So now I need to transfer the perfect points onto the plate. So this is the cool fastening point with a hole for the cable to go out. The original plan was to only screw into the felt, but these panels are really heavy. So we decided to secure this with some circles I made on the CNC machine. So now the screw is biting in this plywood knob and we have all the lifting power. We need. We don't want these to fall down in my head. Or even worse, on the studio equipment. <laughs> Spray adhesive for professional usage. Wow. So this is building isolation, I think. Quite high density. And we learned the hard way that it was really hard to work with these panels like this. So when I'm going to lift these panels by myself, I'm going to do another method. Here's the mounting point. I'm gonna cut up here. So we can hang the panel and lay this extra insulation at the very, very end when it's already hanging. My leather has socks. That's the cutest thing I've ever seen. I've been thinking a lot about how to do this lift safely by myself. <laughs> I'm high enough now so I can reach the connectors and I can actually very comfortably screw them in because there's no tension. The panel is now hanging on these points and the points are level with laser. And I don't know if it comes across on camera but they are flat. Whew. 
So this pipe here, I have the same pipe over there, is for mounting things under the panels to hang over my desk. This is awesome. The lifting method works, let's try to repeat the success. Boom! Three panels are up. So now I need to cut this filling rock wool thing. Check this out. I hope I have space. Maybe I made a mistake. It's gonna be tight. Maybe it's gonna be alright. Let's give it a try. I mean, no one can die. Maybe just a little. Uh -huh. That doesn't go. You know what? Why overcomplicate stuff? Spectacular! That slides in like a charm. Time for a nice moment. These cable entries. Listen to this press fit. Just listen to this. Headphones on. <laughs> That's a press fit. So in these places we have a red pipe which lets me feed cable to any of the other openings. We also have electricity and it's marked for what is for audio and what is for other equipment. It's important to keep audio separate to minimize hum. So if I want to connect something I can put all the cables through this, connect it here what about that, huh? My dear friends, I've been working 12 hours straight. It's time for a huge surprise. Woot woot! So here comes the cherry on the cake. The spaceship from Lyon. So here is my custom built desk. The eagle has landed. So now you can see how we planned these two cable trays to be under the desk, here and here. So I can connect all my preamps and stuff here and my side rack there. Olivier is helping me repairing my big Genelec monitor, so I'm just putting the NS10 up now. This desk is massive. On this desk I will make the new Windgatan album. I'm so happy for it. it, I think it's absolutely awesome. Play on Mars 2026? Sure, will be fun. To make it totally obvious for everyone, this is studio equipment in racks. I've been investing heavily in a lot of studio equipment and they're gonna be here, like that. You see how clean that looks? And Olivier got the idea and we're gonna do that to build a side rack here in the same style as the table. So then I can fill a whole tower here, maybe even double sided. And I have one more easter egg, maybe the best of them all. I am knackered after 14 hours of working. But it's time for the easter egg. So I'm sitting here, PMing you, trying to make some project charters. And I get an idea in my head. Hmm. What if I... Boom! Comes my keyboard out from underneath. I love this so much. My whole life I've had the keyboard on the side, always in this direction over here. And always a left ear towards the speakers, right? And it's just like... Mwah. And what I love with this, that I asked Olivier for, is that it slides all the way back to here. Because I said, I don't want to bump my knees in it. So it's sliding all the way here. I don't even feel it with my knees now. And anytime I need it, I can just... Oh, how cool is that? Look at that. <laughs> you wanna see it again? Randomly forking some pieces on chess.com and... Yesterday after working 14 hours, it was funny how happy I got from the sliding keyboard. <laughs> it's really the dream, like I can slide it now. I can just slide it for fun. So if there's anyone else who wants an awesome custom built desk, you can check out the link in the description. Olivier has two companies. He has the ID Acoustic and he has the showroomaudio.com. And it's the showroomaudio.com link for the music studio equipment and these custom desks that they built and designed. And, and a huge thanks to Olivier for being a great designer and for letting my keyboard slide so well. Well, you know what time it is, Martin? It's time for Community Corner. 
we need to clarify something about last week, the solenoid solution. Yeah, uh, people thought that it was going to replace the programming wheel. Yeah, a lot of people, I think, m- misread the whole thing. And just to clarify, no. I just took it for obvious. Uh, so what we meant with this system is that it's a help to compose the music. You can compose it and you use it to make the programming plate. And then you take it off and you play the machine with the resulting programming plate. Yeah. So it's just it's just a tool to uh, to make the composing phase easier. Yeah, before you order the stud welded plates. And uh, I would never replace the programming system with an electronic system. Then I would actually just say sunken cost fallacy start to play guitar instead and say thanks for <laughs> thanks for watching 128 weeks <laughs> together with us what you're seeing here is a haptolin a 3d printed microtonal midi instrument the instrument is fully open source so you can make one for yourself haptolin is the child of four inspirations ferramin modulin haptics glove and power glove when i saw the modulin video i really wanted to make an instrument of similar capabilities myself The design process took almost exactly a year, and I made five prototypes on the way. If you're interested, you can check the full presentation of the project on YouTube. Thank you. Oh, that's so cool. The Haptolin. I absolutely love it. I remember Hannes showing me some uh, uh, stop-motion animator who got famous for stop-motion animation with a Nintendo Power Glove. You remember, Hannes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Robot Chicken. Robot Chicken. What is really fun to see is that the Modulin now becomes an inspiration for something else because the Modulin was standing on the shoulders of giant and the Modulin is becoming a little mini giant of its own. (laughs) Really cool idea. I can see you having two of them at the same time and just standing, playing with your arms out like this. Really, really cool. Well done. Thanks for showing us. Hey, Martin, I'm a huge fan of yours and thank you for inspiring me to do this. What's that? (laughs) <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. That is absolutely brilliant. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> love it so much. <laughs> It's so Colin first. It feels like he's <laughs> he's like in the basement of Colin first, and he, he just oh, did you see the cat, Hannes? The cat? Was there a cat? Yeah, have you missed? Did you miss the cat? Oh my the god! Cat? So I said, thank you so much for showing this. Absolutely love it. Brilliant. Five yeah. out of five Wilsons. It feels like this cat has seen a lot through his days, you know. <laughs> He doesn't get scared by anything at this point. He's seen <laughs> everything in this laboratory. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. Keep the submissions coming. It's a wonderful end to our videos. We get to laugh a bit and get inspired as well. Thanks to you, 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 and you for following along on this journey and still believing in the project. Until next time, take care, everybody out there. And we see you on the next Vintergatan Wednesdays. Boom!